I'd like to ask that the beta club members come back out. I know Dave recognized them earlier, but I'd like to for the crowd to give them a hand for all the hard work they've done. I told them earlier that I hope they'll be sitting in the chairs either next year or next. <laughs> But thank you so much for your help. We've been doing this tradition for a long time. Kay Chastain, many of you may remember her, was an English teacher at the high school. She was one that pushed for that. She said, these Bay Club students need to be there to see what this star band is about. So uh, I always think about Miss Chastain when we have a band. But thank you again for your hard work. I want to uh, give some more thanks to some people without their help who couldn't put this banquet on. Uh, we have a, a small committee, but they do a lot of work. Susan, Sue Appleton is a tremendous amount of help. She, I think her basement must be full of optimist stuff. <laughs> more than half the stuff, but we appreciate everything Sue does. I'd like to thank Susan White for uh, doing the registration tonight, and Anita Walker for handling the beta club and working with the high school on that. Uh, this is the first year that we've used the uh, soup and nuts. And if you don't know what that is, that's the catering arm of uh, the carriage house. We appreciate the carriage house uh, taking over our catering role for the bank. No. Uh, I'd like to again thank the Pickens County Progress for all they do. And uh, there's a lady that uh, does a lot. You see the program, the uh, certificates here. Patsy Smith has been doing those, I believe, since the Optimus Club has been doing this program. Uh, she's calligraphy and she's in her 80s. And I had invited her to come tonight, but she doesn't do real well at night, so she wasn't able to come. And she, if, if any of you know Patsy, she used to teach some uh, some kind of classes, uh, <laughs> some other thing you ladies do. <laughs> she is. Uh, I don't remember what it is. She is a tremendous lady. Her and her husband live off of Grandview Road, and uh, she just uh, has done a great job for us over the years. And, Appreciate what she does doing that for us. I'd like to thank Kyle France for photography. Kyle took all the pictures of the students and the teachers that's in the program as in the paper. And uh, again, the last one I'd like to thank is the Optimus Club of Optimus Club of Georgia and Jasper Foundation, who really fun, funds this banquet tonight because and we appreciate what the foundation does for it. And I'd like to plug the golf tournament. We have a golf tournament every year that helps also with our scholarships and the other programs that we do. It'll be in May at Pitt Tree. So if any of you enjoy hacking around with the golf ball, let us know. We'd be more than glad to have, have a team uh, for you. So. Tonight, uh, the Optimus Club, uh, as uh, Jim said earlier, has been the sponsor for this event for over 30 years. And Tom Eubanks uh, used to recognize the one-star student. Uh, Tom and Matt got together and said, we need to broaden this program. And so tonight, for the last 30 plus years, we've been recognizing the star student and nine additional star students uh, who have the same meet the same criteria as star student does. They're the next nine as far as the, uh, the SAT scores. Uh, each of the students that we recognize tonight is in the top 10 percent of their senior class based on their GPA, and they have obtained a high score on a single test day on the SAT. We honor these 10 students and teachers tonight. And Optimus Club, we will sponsor Nathan and his teacher, uh, Mr. Petty, to the Star Region Banquet, which will be held at North Georgia College in Dahlonega on Tuesday night, March 10th. At the Region Banquet, banquet the winners from Region 2 will compete for Region Honors, and then the Region winner will go on to compete for the honor of being the named State Paid Star Student. Now, for the reason we're here tonight is to honor 10 of these students and their teachers that they have selected. So at this time, I'd ask our president, Jim, to come up. Uh, we'll call out your name, students. If you would come up, and Jim would present a certificate that we have for you that's uh, from the Optimus Club. And we'll also present one from, from the, uh, for the teachers. And I have a letter there that gives you a little more information about when we'll actually present you with your scholarship check, which I'm sure you're all interested in that. <laughs> Our first star student finalist, uh, Ms. Corey Edson, is not able to be here tonight, but I'd like to ask her star teacher, Ms. Lisa Payne, to come up. And we'll present Corey and uh, Lisa's uh, certificate to her.
Corey is the daughter of Lee and Deborah Edson. And again, we're sorry that she couldn't be here tonight. Thank you, Lisa, for taking that. Our next star student finalist is Mr. Adam Hunt. Adam is the son of Milton and Rhonda Hunt, and he chose as his star teacher Miss Christy Hockett. Kobe was able to be here. It's Mr. Kobe James. <laughs> Kobe is the son of Michael and Michelle James, and he chose as his star teacher, Mr. Will Nix. Our 
next star student finalist, Mr. Matt Webb. <laughs> Matt is the son of Steve and Kimberly Webb, and he chose as his star teacher, Miss Lynn Campbell. This time we'll recognize the 2020 Pickens High School star student, Mr. Nathan Hamilton. <laughs> Nathan is the son of Greg and Kim Hamilton, and he chose as his star teacher, Mr. Keith Petty. You got a whole two. There you go. <laughs> they actually get a certificate from Paige. This time I ask Mr. Keith Petty to come up and say a few words, and then after him, Nathan will follow. Um, it is certainly an honor to be chosen as star teacher by Nathan Hamilton. In one way or another, he and I have been associated as teacher and student every year since he was in eighth grade in my honors English class at Jasper Middle School, and then that year I moved up to the high school. I witnessed his diligence and commitment to his education for five years, and it's not surprising to me that he has earned the title of Pickens County Star Student. In every one of his endeavors, of which I'm aware, he's never given less than 100% and the majority of the time he is given markedly more. He's a skilled writer, and his ability has helped to enhance the PHS Dracky Yearbook. He's a talented actor and singer, and his performances have brought enjoyment in various PHS and FX productions. He's an analytical thinker whose ideas spur deeper engagement for others during class discussions. He's a leader and a true scholar, and in addition to earning the title of star student, he has also earned the title of Pickens High School's salutatorian for the graduating class of 2020. I have every expectation that his remarkable success will only continue as he makes his way through post-secondary education and establishes himself in a career. So naturally, I'm incredibly proud of his hard work and accomplishments but that's not what makes me most proud of him. What makes me most proud of Nathan is the young man that he has become. He's honest, respectful and respectable, dependable, friendly, and a person who lets his faith shine without ever being condescending toward others' beliefs. And a lot of adults could learn lessons from him. That's why that being chosen as his star teacher means so much. When you're younger as a teacher and you get something, it's the accolade, and I think that's part of being young. But um, the fact that he's a solid, quality human being and his appreciation of whatever small contributions I've made to help him allow me to rationalize that I'm still in the right place after 25 years in education. Um, and I'm there for the right reasons. Love of the profession, but most importantly, love for my students. In addition to Nathan, I've taught the majority of the PHS students in this room, and I can say that I care about all of them, and that's where we can find the true core of education, which is relationships. My colleague and fellow star teacher, Ms. Christy Hobgood, in her good-natured teasing, told me that I'm supposed to get up here and spout some sort of profound educational wisdom. Um, I don't know that I have any, but I think that in the world of education, we try to reinvent the wheel far too many times instead of simply using basic practices and common sense. But anything that we try can't be truly effective and will most often fall apart if we cannot make human connections with our students. 
seems that the more we move into the future, the more that the people who are higher up want to see education as some sort of automated, cookie-cutter, impersonal experience. But we've already taken the human element out of far too much in our country and in our lives, so we can't do the same with education. In addition to providing academic rigor in education, we must nurture, praise, and love our students because that's what they need. Working effectively and taking academic um, aspect of public education seriously is incredibly important, but not every minute should be devoted to the curriculum. There are days in my classroom when we take time just to get to know each other. We talk as a group, I find out what's going on in students' lives, we kid around, we laugh, I listen to problems, and we have one-to-one -one conversations sometimes. And that's what brings me back to Nathan. Um, in getting ready for tonight and answering questions for the STAR program, <coughs> Nathan and I sat down one afternoon after school and we previewed what we were writing just to make sure that we had certain facts correct. But most of that afternoon was just a conversation. And we spent a good hour or so just sitting there talking with one another and enjoying each other's company. And that's the human element of education. And that's what builds a solid foundation for the academia. Without relationships, education is just cold knowledge and skills. Over five years, I feel that an incredibly strong relationship has developed between Nathan and me. And it doesn't end with his graduation from PHS. The teacher-student relationship evolves into an adult friendship, just as Nathan has evolved into, evolved into an outstanding young man. Anytime he needs anything, he can feel free to call upon me, and he can feel free just to come by and have one of those hour-long talks. And it's the same for the other students in the room, and I'm sure it's the same with the other teachers. The door is always symbolically open. As they walk into life, I wish Nathan and all the STAR students the very best, and I hope they know that they're loved by me and by my fellow teachers. We form relationships with students so that we may foster within them success in academia and success beyond secondary education. And I hope, Ms. Hopgood, that that's enough educational wisdom for you. <laughs> And now, your 2020 Pickens County star student, Mr. Nathan Hamilton. Good evening. My name is Nathan Hamilton, and I'm incredibly honored to be this year's star student. First, I would like to thank my star teacher and friend, Mr. Keith Bennett. I have been blessed with many wonderful teachers during my time as a PHS student, but when it came time for me to choose my star teacher, there's no way I could have given up an opportunity to show just how much Mr. Bennett has meant to me. He and I first met in an 8th grade honors literature class at the old Jasper Middle School. That year remains one of my favorites, largely thanks to his class. I can still clearly remember reading To Kill a Mockingbird, and it was one of, the, one of the first times that I'd ever truly thought critically about something. The experience instilled in me a love for classic literature, a love for discussion, and a love for every class Mr. Petty and I would have together for the next five years. Since that first novel, he and I have worked on three PHS yearbooks together, shared countless short stories, and held conversations about everything from politics to mostly true ghost stories from right here in Pickens County. <laughs> He's been an inspiration, a source of reason during some hectic times, and one of the best people I know to brighten up your day. More than anything else, Mr. Petty has taught me four lessons that I know will carry me farther than any single standard in the literature curriculum. He taught me the importance of being kind. He taught me the importance of taking care of myself. He's helped me to learn the, uh, he helped me, taught me how to truly think independently. And he developed in me the ability to defend what I believe in. I've never seen anyone blend those skills together quite as well as Mr. Petty. And I find that I'm always at my happiest and at my academic best when I'm able to spend time in his class and under his influence. His natural teaching ability, his amazing capacity to care for his students, gave me everything I needed to find my voice as a writer. And he makes sure that every student that sits in one of his desks has an opportunity to use that voice for good. 
I could not ask for a better mentor or friend than Mr. Keith Betty. Uh, at this time, I would like to thank several others who have been instrumental to my success, because I certainly have not made it here alone. As I've already said, uh, I owe this honor to countless teachers who have helped me grow throughout the years. In particular, I would like to thank two of the greatest math teachers that any students could ever ask for, Mrs. Wayne Cantrell and Dr. Kathy Dumeen. If you had asked me even four years ago how I felt about math, I would have told you that I wanted absolutely nothing to do with it after I graduated. <laughs> but uh, today, calculus is by far my, one of my favorite subjects, and I plan on using it every day at the University of Georgia, where I plan to major in uh, business and uh, management and informational systems. And that's all thanks to those two amazing teachers. <coughs> Beginning in Ms. Cantrell's class, when I took pre-calculus with her, and even more so in Dr. Lemieux's calculus class, um, math suddenly had an application that I felt like I could really put my hands on. It truly felt like everything I'd ever learned in a math classroom had some, suddenly come together into something that I could see myself doing for the rest of my life. It takes a really special teaching talent to cause a kid to take a complete 180 on his life plans. And I'm very glad that they're both here to be recognized tonight. But I cannot close this speech without thanking another hugely influential math teacher in my life, my mother. Um, Although uh, I have not been able to spend time with her in the classroom since eighth grade, uh, both she and my dad have, have laid the foundations of me that led me here tonight. Along with them, I have to thank uh, every member of my incredibly supportive family, my sister Kinsley, my girlfriend Katie, all of my friends out here in the audience. Um, once I've gone from PHS, it's the memories that I've made with, with all of you that will you know, truly, be, truly be the ones I look, look back on most fondly. In closing, I owe a huge debt of gratitude to every member and benefactor of the Pickens County School System. I will always be proud to say that I'm a product of Pickens, and if you're hearing me speak, I want you to know that I'm incredibly grateful for all you've done for me. So next August, as I make the transition from a dragon to a bulldog in Athens, I promise to do everything I can to represent and to give back to the community and the people that helped raise me. Thank you. placement after the, uh, the best speech of the night so far. It's, all right. it's, it's penance for being late the other day. Um, so I just have a few comments. Uh, the, the book was mostly just to see uh, Miss Hamilton's face. So I, it's, it's just a prop. Don't, don't worry. Um, so I brought that just, just for that moment. So I was prepared. Um, before I introduce our keynote speaker, I would like to say a few words. Um, as many of you know, my, uh, my children, Chris, Nick, and Emma, um, thankfully by the grace of all that is wholly academically took after their mother, and uh, Mr. Puma, uh, some of you uh, may be scholarly survivors of her classroom, and uh, are the better for it. Uh, she is the most intelligent person I know, uh, maybe next to Nick, my family will concede, and I think Nathan Hamilton uh, may give him a run for his opinion. Um, as star student finalists in 2016, 18, and 19, they sat in the very chairs that you do right now. And if you're doing the math with me, parents, yes, you realize they are all still in college. Um, and that leads me to this, um, these points. Parents, in a few short months, you will, sorry to say, not sleep with your phone off ever for the next four years of your life. <laughs> Um, you're going to be getting text messages at 9 p.m., which are great. I like those. You're going to be getting calls that you're eager to accept. Those messages are soon going to turn into 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. text messages or calls. Calls like, what does that red blinky light do on the car dash? <laughs> yeah, go figure that one out. Or this one that came in the other night at 2 a.m. If baby boomers are represented by Darth Vader and millennials are Luke Skywalker, does that make Gen Xers Han Solo? Dad, dude, you are a Han Solo. <laughs> At 2 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Not, I'm bleeding, I'm dead, I'm in the hospital. Dad, dude, you are a Han Solo. <laughs> and my favorite one from the family group chat that we have, what the heck, Jake Fromm, with the sibling response of, from whom the bell tolls. If you don't get that reference, see Mr. Petty after class. 
This resulted in a three-day texting meme nerd war, which I actually had to put my phone on silent for about half an hour, because, you know, they're all far away from me. Uh, so, parents, I encourage you to answer these messages as best you can, because all the calls, if no one is hurt, jailed, or in peril, or the above. As I say, thank you, Nick. <laughs> That was not planned, I promise. Um, so, as I said, if no one has heard jail or in peril or above, I've heard that pass the phone technique is popular. That kind of goes like, good honey, that's great. Talk to your father. So, use that technique. So, that's what I have for you parents. Uh, all stars, word of advice. This is the best thing I can offer you. Uh, make sure you're answering the right question in everything that you do in college. Answer the right question. Context is key. So, and this is a life experience thing as well. Last year, as I worked overnight on a task force for my job, I got a phone call. Um, I work from home at the office sometimes. I answered the call, and it was a sale with the following. This is Bill from State Farm Marketing. It's 3 a.m. What are you wearing? Tom from State Farm. <laughs> I answered correctly when I said, um, sweatpants. But I answered the wrong question. So the reign of Jake II continues to this day, and I missed out on possibly being on the Super Bowl. But that's okay. So remember, folks, answer the right question. So, lastly, all-stars, I want you to do this for me right now. Take out your phones. Come on, Nate. Be a leader. Take out your phones. Pull up the calendars. Scroll to Wednesday, September 9th, 2020. Create a reminder right now. At the time of your choosing, there's freedom. Type this in. Call your mother. Hit save. The execution of that reminder is up to you, but it's in there. All right, folks. Let's talk about Nicole Lee MacArthur. She was a 2004 graduate of PHS. You can read her bio in the in the brochure. She is the law office. She owns a law office. Excuse me, Nicole MacArthur at LLC, where she practices in the areas of criminal defense and personal injury. We talked a good bit at dinner. Uh, she and I, our paths have not crossed in business, which is kind of cool. Um, but I'd like to talk with you a, bit, a little bit about some things that you may not know, which is not a uh, biography there. Her favorite book is The Great Gatsby. Sorry, Mr. Petty, it's not to kill my number. Um, her Walter Mitty moment is she would like to own a beach house, which I think is great. Edisto Beach or Gulf Shores? Okay, oh, okay, see, okay. Um, the book she's reading now is Call of the Wild, Jack London, which is great. I asked her right or left Twix, and she said Snickers. <laughs> which I think is a very clever answer from the attorney. Um, I did ask her Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul, and uh, she said Breaking Bad, and then she said uh, Scandal would, would also be her recommendation as a TV show. And the famous person that she would like to meet, and she said Barbara Walters. So that's a little bit more about our speaker, Kathy Lee McCartney. And as a 2004 uh, Pickens High School graduate, uh, an attorney in the area, uh, please read her bio. But Ms. MacArthur, please come and save me from the rest of my speech. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's an honor and a privilege to be here tonight to celebrate with you all and to honor these amazing star students. Uh, the star teachers, and the star parents and families. Um, it really does take a village, and that is evident tonight um, from your successes and um, from your, the support of your teachers and your parents. Thank you also to the Optimist Club for supporting our youth and investing in programs that celebrate their accomplishments. We are so fortunate to live in a community that places so much emphasis um, and so much value on education and supports our students. 
as I was preparing to speak to you tonight, um, it brought back a lot of memories um, of my time when I was here, well not here, but at PHS, um, and growing up here in Jasper. Um, so I was in your seats almost 16 years ago. Um, that took me, took me back um, when I figured that out. So, <laughs> um, but as I thought about my time, um, and you're about to enter a transition period, and it's exciting, um, probably a little scary. Um, I just want to uh, encourage you to take it all in. Um, you know, when I was sitting where you are, ready to, you know, I was ready to get out and take on the world. So, kind of a little bit about me. Um, when I graduated in 2004, I attended uh, Mercer University. Um, I actually thought I wanted to be a pediatrician. I'd always said that since I was young. Um, once I got to Mercer um, and started taking classes, I actually changed to psychology. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, but after graduating from Mercer, um, I decided to go to law school, um, and I attended a small school in Montgomery, Alabama, uh, Faulkner University Jones School of Law. Um, so I stayed there for three years and then worked at a, a law firm there. And all of my family, um, they were back here in Jasper. Um, most of my friends were back in Atlanta, um, and I knew that I, I wanted to get back home. I've been away long enough, and I needed to get back. Um, so at that point, uh, the district attorney um, here had just been elected, and so I applied with her and luckily got a job um, and started in February of 2013, um, and from there I prosecuted cases. I started in juvenile court, um, and that was very eye-opening, um, and then I moved to uh, doing misdemeanors and felonies. Um, we prosecuted cases in probate court, uh, magistrate court, and superior court. So we did a little bit of everything. Um, and that was a great experience. I did that for about four years. Um, and then just decided, I think I want a change of pace. So then I um, decided to go into private practice um, into criminal defense with a firm in Marietta. Um, and so I worked there for about a year. And then I decided, you know what? I think I'm gonna try this on my own. So that's what I did. I opened my own office um, in 2017. And so I practice now in um, criminal defense and I've expanded to personal injury. Um, so tonight, I'm not gonna stand up here and, and tell you to go to class and you know be on time and study. You, you clearly have, have that day. Um, what I would like to do is just kind of share a few things that I learned along the way um, that can hopefully help you one day. Um, so some of those, you know, right now you're kind of in a transition period. Um, and you're getting ready to move on to the next phase. And I'll say probably growing up in Jasper, you know, it's, it's pretty comfortable. Um, you've been a pretty big fish in a, in a smaller pond and you're about to move on. Um, to the next phase. So some of you may be going to a smaller liberal arts school. Um, some of you may be going to a larger university um, that's you know 10 times the size of, of where you are now. So uh, just some of the things that I learned. So one thing I think it's important to figure out who you are. Figure out who you want to be. Um, and that you know takes different experiences. You're going to meet people um, just take it all in. And I'm not saying you have to figure it out on day one, but just take those four years to really explore what interests you, um, what you enjoy, and that will lead you, if, if you don't know exactly what you want to do right now, that's okay. A lot of people don't, and if you have a plan, that's fantastic. But, but don't be afraid to just explore, and if those things change, just let it. Um, several of you mentioned in um, your forms that you that you filled out um, about creating relationships, and, and Mr. Petty, you, you spoke about this as well. Um, that is, I couldn't agree more. That is going to be your key to success. Um, right now, you know, it's it's been pretty easy to create relationships. You know, 
you know, a lot of these people, you may have gone to school with them since preschool, and, you know, now you're graduating with them. So, you know, when you get out into um, your colleges and universities, just make those relationships. Um, network. You never know. It could be 10 years from now, and someone that you met in college could offer you a job. They could recommend you for a committee. Um, you just, you never know how valuable those connections will be until you're, you're in that moment. Um, once you make those connections, I would say get involved. You know, really, there's going to be opportunities for clubs and internships and different experiences. Get involved in, with as much as you can. Um, that's just only going to enrich your college experience. I think probably this is maybe the second um, biggest piece of advice is don't be afraid to fail. Um, where you're sitting now, you're at the, the highlight um, right now of, of your senior year. Um, and I will say that some of you, it, it's going to be a transition period um, in college. So even if you make mistakes, and something doesn't turn out the way that you thought it would, that's okay. That's how you learn. So when I went to college, um, in high school, I had taken all the AP classes, the AP calculus, um, and, you know, we, we did well. Um, in high school, we got, you know, all the, all the AP classes, and so I thought, well, when I go to college, it's, it's fine. I can take the higher level math classes, and so I was pre-med major, so, <laughs> I was placed into the chemistry classes, and I had English and several other electives. And I remember coming out um, of my first semester um, of my calculus final, and I called my mom, and I, I'm pretty sure I was crying at that point, and I said, I think I just fell out of Mercer. Um, and something that my dad and, and my stepdad um, don't know until right now, so surprise, um, I actually lost hope that first semester. Mom and I kept it. It was, it was our little secret. Um, I got it back, but at that point, it was, I had to kind of take a step back and, and realize that, you know, the sciences and the math path may not be for me. Um, so that's when I started taking psychology classes um, and criminal justice um, classes, and that's when I started thinking, well, maybe if I don't want to do the medical field, maybe the legal field is something that, that I would be good at. Um, I like to argue and, and stand my ground, so um, it was just the next step, but if I, you know, if I hadn't failed in the very beginning, you know, I don't know what I would have chosen to do. Um, so just don't be afraid, don't be afraid to fail. Uh, don't be afraid to change your major. Um, you know, if you have a plan now and it changes later, that's okay. You know, perhaps don't change it your last semester of your senior year, but, you know, just, um, just explore and figure out what, what you want to do. Um, I think I would also say just stay true to who you are, and this goes to um, creating your reputation. And you've had 18 years to create that reputation here, um, and it takes, it takes a while to create it, but it only takes a few moments to destroy it. So just go back to surrounding yourself with people that lift you up and that have similar interests to you um, and that will support you and that's what will be the key to your success. I think lastly, just have fun. Have fun and take it all in. You know, as I, as I was reading the advice that you would give um, to the upcoming freshmen, most of you said, enjoy it, because four years goes by so quickly. Well, the next four years that you're about to embark on goes by even faster. So just enjoy it. Take it all in. Um, whether you're going off to school or, or staying close by, um, it's an experience that will change you forever. And it's clear that, that you've made the preparation necessary and that you will continue that. Um, but just don't take yourself too seriously and just remember to have fun 
and to experience it. Um, just take the advice and the guidance that has served you well uh, this far. And it's clear that every single one of you has the ability um, and will be successful. And I can't wait to hear years from now about your success. Um, I just want to thank you again for allowing me to speak. Um, it's truly been an honor and a privilege. Um, and if I can ever help you in any way, um, please feel free to reach out. Um, I can talk to you about the medical field or the legal field, um, but I will be happy to, um, to talk to anyone. Um, and again, thank you again, and just best of luck. Thank you, Nicole, for coming and sharing their insight with you. See, I told you, these kids that are here tonight, these young people, are standing right on the threshold of adulthood. You're not there yet. You may think you are, but not quite yet. But you're standing right there on the threshold. And in just a handful of years, we're going to see dramatic changes in the lives of each of these kids. So it, it's very exciting. And I feel very optimistic about their future <laughs> and their infant. Thanks for speaking to us. We have a little gift for you. It's a little heavy. Thank you for coming, Dr. Thank you very much. <laughs> and there you have it. An evening we have spent together celebrating the accomplishments of these 10 outstanding students and their chosen teachers. It fills us all with optimism. Tonight's Star Banquet is one of numerous ways that fellow citizens of yours of Pickens County are working together as the Optimist Club of Jasper to enrich the lives of, community, of our community's kids of all ages. Other activities throughout our year include the Junior Optimist Clubs at Pickens Junior High School and Pickens High, the Legion of Character at Pickens Junior High, popping popcorn and cheesing nachos at Dragons basketball games, and what a great season we had. <laughs> pre-football game, feeding the dragons as part of Dragon Nation. Essay contest just completed. Oratorical comp competition, which is coming a week from this Saturday at Jasper United Methodist Church. If you get the opportunity, please come by there. It's at 9 o'clock in the morning. 9 a.m. 10. 10. 10. 10 a.m. <laughs> at Jasper United Methodist, where you will see these kids that do a lot of preparation and they really have to screw up a lot of courage to stand in front of people and demonstrate themselves and try to convey points and be um, effective and persuasive in what they have to say. It takes a lot of courage to do that and it will make you feel better about yourself and the kids of our community uh, if you will come there and take an hour or so just to listen to those presentations. Another thing is communications contests for the deaf and hard of hearing. We will also have uh, a contestant from Pickens County that will be representing us as we go to district and that competition is going to be held in Carrollton, Georgia uh, in about a month. So that's going to be taking place. We also have the Junior Optimist Golf Tournament and the Vaughn Hinton Citizenship Award which is named after our charter president, Reverend Vaughn Hinton. Financial donations also are made to over 20 child supporting organizations of Pickens County, from ACES to Angels on Horseback, from 4-H to Joy House, from First Foundation for Childhood Literacy to Prevent Child Abuse Pickens. 
We, and we fund all of this through three Optimus Club of Jasper fundraising events. In June, we have the Flapjack 5K Run. You need to be there. <laughs> Whether you could finish it or not is not necessarily the issue, but it would be a terrific goal for me to set to do that. But to come to that 5K run, and when those who complete the run, they get a great t-shirt, and you get a flapjack breakfast from 61 May. <clears throat> then we have uh, our scholarship golf tournament, which is coming up in May. That will be held at Bent 3. And the Optimus Fall Pecan Sales, that you want to be sure and continue to support us in that. The best ways that you can support us is through sponsorships that uh, are available for these events, either business or personal sponsorships, and by your attendance at these events. This is where the money comes from that we <coughs> use to help the kids of Pickens County in as many ways as we possibly can. The Optimus Club of Jasper is part, proud to be a part of the worldwide organization of Optimus International. The practice of optimism is not naivete or blind hope that everything will turn out just fine. As optimists, we instead promise ourselves to look at the sunny side of everything and make our optimism come true. We hope you will accept this invitation that I extend to you now to our reception or our open house that we're having at 61 Main Restaurant in downtown Jasper one week from today, Thursday, March the 5th, between 5 and 7 o'clock. Come check us out. Then you can make an informed decision about whether the Optimus Club of Jasper is right for you. If you have any questions, ask anyone that's wearing one of these bright and shiny badges and they can talk to you more about our club. Thank you for being here tonight. I appreciate it. I know these kids appreciate it. Their parents appreciate it. I told you it would be a night to remember that it would be a milestone and I think you'll agree that it has been. If you would all please stand and join me in the Optimus Street, which is printed on the back of your program. <clears throat> Promise yourself to be so strong that nothing can disturb your peace of mind. Thank you for being here. We're adjourned.